I have a question for you. Why you want to go through a pain and why you want to suffer if you have a solution for that? If you know there is a solution exists for your problem, why you still want to suffer and go through a pain? You don't want, right? And then the second question is, how many times per day you are using HTTP? To develop a website, to develop an API, to call an API, to integrate with your front end. How many times per day, day and day out, you are using HTTP? And you, do you know, you, most of you are still using HTTP 1.1. But do you know HTTP 3.0 is released? Why? Because there are so many pain points on HTTP 1.1, so HTTP 3.0 also released. But still, we stuck with the 1.1. But why? Some of you don't know that it exists. Some of you don't know what you're going through is a pain. It's become a normal to you, so you don't know something is better is exist. So today we are going to explore something. We are going to explore what other solution exists for our problems. We are going to explore HTTP 2.0 because I want you to take to HTTP 3.0. If I directly take into HTTP 3.0, you won't understand it. So therefore, I'm going to go through 2.0. If you like this type of content, if you're looking for this type of content, it's right time to subscribe to my channel and also click a thumbs up if you like it and put a comment, give your feedback so then it would be a motivation for my next video, right? Okay, let's go ahead. So what is HTTP? HTTP originally came on 90s. It is not new, right? It almost more than 30 years old. So now our biggest problem is why we are stuck in 1.1. And what was the previous problem we had? So if you know what was the problem and how 1.1 solve it, then it will be a motivation you to jump into 2.0 or a 3.0 because then you know most of your current problem would be solved there. So that is why we little need to peek into the history and see what was the problem they were going through before 1.1 come. Since you and me both start with the 1.1, we don't feel the problem our previous people had. Okay, so let's go through the that that history a little bit to understand where we came from. So HTTP protocol 0.9 original release in 1991. So that protocol was a very simple protocol. It just support HTTP GET. And because the website we had those days is very simple, very HTML, very text-based, so hypertext transfer protocol was more than enough what we had those days because based on the requirement we had and the computational power we had. So then 1996, HTTP 1.0 release, and this is kind of a milestone release because that is the first time we start to see HTTP headers or else a metadata on the HTTP protocol. And not only metadata, it start to support mimes and content types and different different features that came with the 1.0. But how the 1.0 work, you open a connection, you send the message, you get the response and you close the connection. Okay, open a new connection, send the message, close the, uh, receive the response, close the connection. So if you have a hundred messages to send, you open a hundred connection, hundred times the connection and close hundred times. So this is adding more latencies. So it was not scalable with the growth of internet. Though we released HTTP 1.0 in 1996, just after one year, we realized HTTP 1.0 doesn't support for evolution of internet because uh, day to day we need to deal with the large website, web pages and then we need to send the hundreds of thousands of requests to backend and then opening and closing connection create a heavy headache and heavy latency on the request. So therefore, in 1997, they released HTTP 1.1. The key implementation, key improvement of the HTTP 1.1 was a keep alive header, right? Now what you can do is you can open a connection and you can instruct to server to keep the connection, which is called persistence connection, right? So now you open a connection, you send your request, you get your response and you send the other request and get the response and send the other request and get the response. And also they introduced something called pipelining. What it means, you can open a connection, you can keep sending the request and then you can get the response later. You don't have to wait for a response to send the request. Then what happens is, server has to respond in the same order it receives the request. Otherwise, the client can't map the request to the response. But this was not a good idea. This was not a much successful implementation. One by one, uh, servers and the website stopped supporting that because in the proxies in middle of that, they were kind of messing up with these 
uh, pipelining concept. So then what browser try to do is browser is try to keep open multiple connection. Usually they open like a six connection to the server and then they can send the multi, uh, uh, parallel connection to the server to get the resources and then they can kind of a deal with the fast loading, right? But it, the, it was kind of a workaround for the uh, problem it had with the protocol, right? Because in the one protocol, you open, send the request and get the response. And then to send the next request, you had to wait for the response uh, unless you support the pipelining. Right. So because of this, they went to work around to open a parallel connection to the server. Then again, server side, it kind of have a, uh, if you have a one client, one browser running to the server, it may open a six different parallel connection from the one browser. It's not a good idea, but it's not a bad either because we need a solution for the problem. In this video, I'm not going to explain in detail about HTTP 1.1 because I have a different video which we discuss detail about HTTP 1.1, all those handshaking, keep live headers, where are those goes, and with the Wireshark uh, tracing, we have a detailed video about it. So just go and watch that video. I'm not going to discuss that video, that depth concept here because this video is not for that. So now, now we know that our problem is 1.1, right? Because let's say you open a web page, you need to load index uh, HTML files and some uh, five CSS files, five JavaScript files, right? So then you had to load all together 11 files. So at least you open a six connection to the server because then you can parallelly get those resources. So this is not a good idea. Why? Because internet is keep evolving. The website is getting more complicated and more complex and then lazy loading and so many other concepts coming. The protocol doesn't support for that. Underlying protocol doesn't support for that. So that is why they needed something called some paradigm shift, not just 1.2. They wanted to have a complete paradigm shift to HTTP 2.0. So then in 2015, they released HTTP 2.0. The main target of 2.0 was performance improvement, right? Mainly it was introduced with multiplexing. So now you don't have to open multiple connection to the server. You can send the multiple requests within the same connection, right? That's a huge improvement. And also with the 1.1, we can compress the headers. Headers has to go in uncompressed, though we can use a, a payload compression. But in 2.0, you can use the header compression as well. Not that just a header compression, there's a different mechanism to do that. But if you have a repetition headers and they have a way automatically cache in those headers, it's a very paradigm shift performance improvement from 1.1 to 2.0. So now if you're using 2.0, the from 2015, 16, the, almost all web services start to support the 2.0. If you're using 2.0, you don't have to worry about your browser making a hundreds of connection to the server, right? Because the one server, one request can deliver multiple, uh, one connection can deliver multiple requests. So now there is something new came up with this HTTP 2.0 called something called server push, something like we see in the WebSocket. So how this works is, let's say for example, if you want to load index HTML page, you know with the index HTML page, you need this, uh, these two CSS files and these three JavaScripts, right? So you can tell server, hey, if someone is asking this HTML file, just push this file as well. So then client don't send the request to the server asking these files, server automatically sending these uh, requests, these files back to push to the client. So people very much arguing on this is a really good design is a very bad design because uh, it, it's sending unnecessary data almost because the browser can cache those things because it not always you need these CSS and JavaScript files, right? Browser can, yeah, that's true, but it's allowed to do it. If you want, you can use it. If you don't want, you don't want to use it. So in the journey of HTTP 2.0, there was a very uh, significant milestone. For example, in 2012, Google released SPD by SPD protocol. So that is kind of a influence to release the HTTP 2.0 today what we see. In 2013, IETF performs uh, HTTP 2.0 working group. So after releasing 2.0 in 2015, 2019, Google announced, hey, look, we are going away from TCP and we are going to the quick protocol using HTTP 3.0. In one of my video, I kind of gave a hint what are the limitations of TCP and why we need to move away from the TCP uh, in, the, in the growth of the internet. Because nowadays, complexi complexity of the web pages and the complexity of the requirement we have with the internet and the request response those cycles, we can rely with the TCP inefficiently because 
we can blame for the TCP because TCP was invented to design to deliver the requirement we had those days. But today it's not sufficient for that. So that's why we go for this. Uh, that's why industry move into this new protocol, Quick Protocol, where the T HTTP 3.0 is based on that. We are going to have a separate video to discuss of the HTTP 3.0. So therefore, I'm not going to discuss in this video why I wanted to kind of uh, make the road toward the 3.0. What are the problems we are even we have in the 2.0? So now you know HTTP 1.0 and also 1.1. And you know what are the problems we are dealing with today. So whatever the problem they had with the 1.0 is easily solved by in, uh, moving to 1.1. So likewise, half of the problem we are dealing today can easily solve by going to HTTP 3.0 at least for 2.0. Why? Because even you can go for 3.0. Most of browsers and the backend servers uh, servers are supporting HTTP 3.0 right now. But if you like thing is too early to go there, yeah, still you can go to HTTP 2.0 because almost all the servers out there now supporting to HTTP 2.0 because it's like almost decade ago. It's 2015, this is 2024. It's almost 10 years, nine years, yeah, I mean, almost 10 years. So we can like we don't have to we don't have to scare to move to that one and that can solve so many of your problems, especially with the multiplexing, even though you don't use the server pushes. So now we are clear, right? So it is 1, 1.1 and 2 and 3. Okay. So in next video, we are going to talk about HTTP 3.0 and what are the other problems HTTP 3.0 are going to solve is mainly limitation of a TCP. If it is not bothering you, you can start with the 2.0. But if you need more performance and more uh, fine, fine tune uh, performance, then you can go for 3.0. So let's discuss that in the next video for now. Just talk to your architect if you're not an architect and see the possibility to remove HTTP 2.0 and solve your main problems. Talk to you soon.